It's me, Julian. Heidi <laughs> High starts on Saturday at 7.35 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, Angela Rippon introduces another round of Master Team. Hello again. Well, it doesn't seem five minutes since we were with you last, and maybe that's because yesterday we left you at a very exciting stage indeed in this game of Master Team because our two teams are neck and neck and just will not be separated. We left them on 18 points apiece, having just played our inner spin round, and uh, I already know, as do you at home if you were watching yesterday, that they've both come up with ten letter words. We'll find out what the words are in a moment and whether or not uh, the five bonus points goes to one team or to both. It could be anything, couldn't it? Let's first of all, though, meet the two teams. First of all, the team that comes from Northampton, and they are... Tim Richardson, gas service engineer. Pam Fraser, and I'm a school clerk. John Poole, an engineer with British Gas. And as a team, they call themselves the Northampton Neutrals. <laughs> And the team that they're playing come from where in Hertfordshire? Let's meet them. They are... Mark Weller, analytical chemist. Carol Barber, analytical chemist. Dave Johnson, analytical chemist. So with three analytical chemists on the team, what else could they call themselves but the analysts from where? Well, you saw the score lines there, 18 apiece, and as I say, we know that each team has given us uh, a ten-letter word. Let's find out what those words are. First of all, Northampton, will you give us your word and spell it, please? Our word is wonderment, W-O-N-D-E-R-M-E-N-T. And analysts, your word and spell it, please? Wonderlust, W-A-N-D-E-R-L-U-S-T. Right, so W-D-T, wonderment from Northampton, Wanda Lust, from where? Both words are correctly spelt. They both have ten letters in them, which means that we give five bonus points to both teams. So the scoreline now reads 23 to the Northampton neutrals, 23 to the analysts from where? Well, let's see what happens now to those scorelines as we play our second round of Spotlight. Yesterday, the analysts got first choice, so today it's the neutrals who are able to choose from the analysts' team. Who would you like to put into the Spotlight, please, neutrals? You can have either Mark or Carol, because Dave had a go yesterday. We'll choose Carol, please. Carol, your Spotlight subject must be chosen from television, pop music, history or cinema. I'll choose history, please. <clears throat> history. And as you know, that means you have one minute in the spotlight to answer questions on history, starting now. Which nation did Lord Byron support in its struggle for independence in 1823? Greece. Correct. Why was John of Gaunt, fourth son of Edward III, so called? Pass. He was born in Ghent. On what type of work were the original navvies or navigators employed? Canal building. Correct. Who has been called the morning star of the Reformation? John Knox. No, John Wycliffe. Hitler said he was building a Reich that would last for a thousand years. How long did it last? Fifteen. Twelve years. What was the family name of the Russian ruling dynasty at the time of the 1917 Russian Revolution? Romanov. Correct. What was the more evocative name for the battle in 1917 known to military historians as the Third Battle of Ypres? Pass. It was Passchendaele. The first vice president of the United States later became the second president. Who was he? Washington. John Adams. What was the name given by the Romans to Scotland? Hibernia. Caledonia. Which Soviet leader came between Stalin and Khrushchev? You may still answer. Which Soviet leader came between Stalin and Khrushchev? Brezhnev. No, it was Malenkov. Carol, at the end of that round, you have scored six points on history, taking your team total to 29. <laughs> a 
analyst would you now like to choose a member of the Northampton neutrals to go into the spotlight? It must be either Tim or John. We choose Tim, please. Tim, your choice from television, pop music or cinema? Um, pop music, please. Pop music is your spotlight subject, so if you're ready, you have one minute starting... Now, which ex-Beatle had a hit in 1972 with Back Off Boogaloo? Ringo Starr. Correct. Who became excitable over their 1985 hit? Pass. Amazulu. Who declared in 1965, I'm her yesterday man? Sandy Shaw. Chris Andrews. Which pop singer's real name is Terence Nellums? Don't know. Adam Faith. Who teamed up with Cliff Richard to have a number one hit with Living Doll in 1986? The Young Ones. Correct. Which singer's first hit was Dumb Blonde? Don't know. Dolly Parton. Of which group was Nick Haywood originally a member? Haircut 100. Correct. What is the name of Elvis Presley's mansion near Memphis? Grislands. Correct. According to Jackie Graham, what have you done by breaking away? Uh, don't know. Broken the rules. Who left the small faces to form the group Humble Pie with Peter Frampton? Steve Marriott. Correct. Name the disc jockey and television presenter who had a hit with Una Paloma Blanca in 1975. Jonathan King. Correct. Who had a hit with Morning Has Broken? Cat Stevens. Correct. Which band was Mick Ralph's with? It's still yours. Which band was Mick Ralph's with prior to joining Bad Company? Mark the Hoople. Correct. The end of that round, Tim. You have scored 16 points on pop music, taking your team score to 39. <laughs> well, that's shaken up the score line a little bit. It now reads that uh, 39 uh, points are what the Northampton Neutrals have on their scoreboard, while 29 points are on the analysts' scoreboard. Let's see what happens as we go into the final round of Team Challenge with your teams, with your fingers on the buzzers' teams, if you're ready. Let's play. If your hobby involved a plain course of grand sire triples, Pam. Bell ringing. Correct. Which symbol of freedom in the new world celebrated its centenary this year? Carol. I must have an answer. I must take it away from you, the opposition. No, it's the Statue of Liberty. Which Jerome Kern classic was a hit for Brian Ferry? Dave. Smoke gets in your eyes. Correct. On a mariner's compass, which point lies halfway between north and northeast? Pam. North, no, no, east. Correct. Hydrogen is the most abundant and lightest chemical element. What comes second to it on... John? Helium. Correct. Which famous speech began, at long last I am able to say a few words of my own? John? Um, the Princess Diane. No. Too late. It was the abdication speech of Edward VIII. What was the number of the new terminal at Heathrow, which opened to the... John? Four. Correct. What was New York's Kennedy Airport called before it was renamed after John F. Kennedy? John? Idlewild. Correct. The buzzer tells us we've come to the end of the game and the end of the round, and the scoreline finally reads that the Northampton neutrals have 49, the analysts from Ware have 31. Which means that the Northampton neutrals will stay with us to meet uh, yet another group for Master Team. But uh, the analysts from where, well, you did win one game in a row, but uh, I'm afraid you couldn't make it two in a row. So um, this is where we have to say to you, thank you, but goodbye. <laughs>
John. Churchill. Correct. Which was the tenth country to join the EEC? John. Greece. Correct. Who is better, the better known brother of Germain, Tito, Jackie and Marlon? Pat Michael. Tim. Michael. Correct. In physics, the joule is a unit of what? John. Heat. No. Reg. Energy. Correct. Which well-known newspaper gossip column was instigated by the Member of Parliament Tom Dryberg? Peter. William Hickey. Correct. In which English city would you find Clifford's Tower? Peter. York. Correct. What name is given to the Chinese salutation whereby the forehead is touched to the ground? Reg. Kowtow. Correct. Which watery novel and film is set in the seaside resort of Amity? Tim. Jaws. Correct. What type of ship is HMS Compass Rose featured in the Cruel Sea? Reg. Cruiser. No. Pam. Warship. No, it was a corvette. Which American state borders both Texas and Tennessee? Peter. Louisiana. No. Too late, it's Arkansas. The lifeguards and the Blues and Royals combine to form what military formation? John. Horse guards. No. Reg. Um, I was going to say lifeguards. Too late, I must have a, an answer. Yes. The answer is the Household Cavalry. Which agency was set up in 1968 to promote the conservation and enhancement of landscape beauty? Pam. Countryside Commission. Correct. The end of that first round of Team Challenge leaves the score lines looking like this. The Northampton Neutrals have ten, the Pack Shots of London have seven. <laughs> Incidentally, I think Tim was uh, a bit sharp off the mark there, as he would be, because his knowledge of pop music, as we remember from his spotlight round in the last game, is, is a bit... Uh, bit clever. The question of who is the better known brother of Jermaine, Tito, Jackie and Marlon? The answer is Michael because the family were the Jacksons of course. Right, let's go on now with our spotlight round and with the Northampton neutrals in the lead that means they get first choice. So which member of the pack shots are you going to put into the spotlight Northampton? We'll choose Nick please. Nick. First off the mark, which means that you have all six subjects up there on the board, and they are cinema, the 1960s, history, television, sport, or current affairs? Sport, please. Sport to be your spotlight subject. So if you're ready, you have one minute in the spotlight on sport starting. Now, which London cricket ground belongs to the Duchy of Cornwall? The Oval. Correct. Who was the first Austrian to become world motor racing champion? Nicky Lauda. Rick Jochen Rint. In which sport was Prince Philip a member of the team which won the team world championship in 1980? Pass. It was driving a coach and horses. Who won the 1985 Grand Prix of Europe held at Brands Hatch? Lauda. Nigel Mansell. In which city did Torval and Dean win the 1983 World Ice Dance Championship? Vienna. Helsinki. Who was men's singles champion at Wimbledon for five consecutive years from 1976 to 1980? Bjorn Borg. Correct. With which football team does Charlton Athletic share a ground? Crystal Palace. Correct. Which Englishman was runner-up to Steve Cram in the Commonwealth Games 1500 metres? Sebastian Coe. John Gladwin. At which sport is Sean Curley an English international? Bowls. Hockey. In which country did ice skater John Curry win an Olympic gold medal? <laughs> You may still answer. Uh, Montreal? No, it was in Austria. At the end of that round, Nick, you have scored six points in the spotlight, giving your team a total of 13. <laughs> London, would you now like to choose a member of the Northampton team to go into the spotlight? I will go for Pam. It's your choice from cinema, 1960s, history, television or current affairs. History, please. History is your spotlight subject, so if you are ready, you have one minute. Starting now, what was the name of the Persian royal astronomer and mathematician who also wrote poetry? Copernicus. Omar Khayyam. Which Italian town was home to Giovanni Bernardone, founder of the new religious order in 1209? Florence. Assisi. Who was the first Governor General of India who was impeached but acquitted? Clive. Warren Hastings. What was the basis of Henry VIII's application for the annulment of his marriage to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon? Pass. She'd been the wife of Henry's elder brother, Arthur. Which English city was known to the Romans as Venta Belgarum? 
Lancaster. Winchester. At which battle did Nelson put his telescope to his blind eye, saying, I have only one eye, I have a right to, to be blind sometimes? Copenhagen. Correct. One of King James I's favourites was assassinated at Portsmouth in 1628. Who was he? Path. Ju George Villiers. Who commanded the victorious army at the Battle of Lewis in 1264, but was defeated and killed a year? <coughs> it's still yours. Who commanded the victorious army at the Battle of Lewis in 1264, but was defeated and killed a year later at the Battle of Evesham? Um, John of Gaunt. No, it was Simon de Montfort uh, of Leicester. <laughs> Pam, at the end of that round, you have scored two points, giving your team a total of 12. So as we reach the halfway point of this game, let's play in a spin. We're going to spin the letters and see which words our teams can come up with. So let's spin the letters. O is the first letter of the sequence and that must be the first letter of your word with N and O to follow in that order and your 30 seconds starts now. up teams will you put your pens down please and first of all Northampton how many letters are there in your word 16 and London how many letters are there in your word 14 Northampton could I have your word and would you spell it please Ornitholo ornithologically <laughs> o-r-n-i-t-h-o-l-o-g-i-c-a-l-l-y and London your word and spell it please ornithological O-R-N-I-T-H-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L. So we've got O-N-O, -O. oh no, oh yes, two words, 16 letters from Northampton, ornithologically, 14 letters from London, ornithological, talk about great minds thinking alike. However, Northampton got the edge because both words are correct, both words are correctly spelt, which means that it's Northampton who pick up the five bonus points and change their score line to 17. Back into another spotlight round again, and this time, London, it's your opportunity to choose a member of the Northampton team, Tim or John, to go into the spotlight. Tim. Tim, this time you can choose from cinema, the 1960s, television or current affairs. Uh, television, please. Okay. This time it's to be television. You have one minute in the spotlight on television, starting... Now, which television detective lives in a mobile home on the Californian coast? Rockford. Correct. Is Rockford. What is the title of TVAM's breakfast program? Uh, good, uh, wake up, no. No, Pass. it's Good Morning Britain. Which long-running documentary series of the 1960s concerning surgical and medical treatment was revived on BBC Two this year? Your Life in Their Hands. Correct. What is the longest-running musical program on British television? Uh, pass. Come dancing. In What's My Line on ITV, which one of the panellists was on the original BBC television series of this programme? Barbara Kelly. Correct. In The Irish RM, what is the name of Major Yates' housekeeper? Pass. Mrs. Cadogorn. What is the family surname in the series No Place Like Home? Pass. Crabtree. In The Man from Uncle, which part was played by Robert Vaughan? Napoleon Solo. Correct. In which popular American series of the 1950s did Broderick Crawford popularise the phrase 10-4? Pass. Highway Patrol. Who currently introduces the Antiques Roadshow on BBC One? <laughs> well, you know the rules by now, so let's meet our six-time Trivia Challenge champion, whose name is? Philip Harding. I'm from Cockermouth. I right, Phil, your occupation? I'm unemployed. And your speciality subject, Phil? Uh, it's Arson Wells. Right, OK. And Philip's new challenger is? Uh, Mark Weller from Ware in Hertfordshire. And your occupation, Mark? Uh, analytical chemist. And your speciality subject? Famous quotations. Fine. Right. You have two minutes of questions, many of which, of course, are sent in by our viewers. And you see the time countdown every ten seconds on the video wall. There's two points for each question, so fingers on the buzzer. The time starts now. 
In which film did Charlton Heston discover that humans were being used for food? Was that uh, Silent Green? It's correct. What did Ian Fleming once describe as dangerous at both ends and uncomfortable in the middle? A, a bed. That's pass it. A uh, baby. No, it was a horse. What's the connection between these three? Phil. They're all uh, uh, Kenny Everett uh, people. Kenny Everett. Kenny Everett is right, OK. Which Shakespearean character did Orson Welles play in Chimes at Midnight? Sir John Falstaff. Is correct. Listen to this piece of music. And who's the singer better known as a Hollywood actor? I'm praying for rain in California. Phil. Bob Hope. Pass it on. Dean Martin. It was Robert Mitchum. Who said anybody who goes to see a psychiatrist ought to have his head examined? Woody Allen. Phil, no, pass it on. Dorothy Parker. It was Samuel Goldwyn. Have a look at this picture. Name the family. <laughs> Phil. Uh, the, uh, the uh, Fosdags. No, pass it on. Uh, it's the Hardacres from Brass. No. Listen to this piece of music and tell me who composed this classic Orson Welles theme. Rounds on your faces. <laughs> Phil? Dimitri Tiomkin. No. Mark? Hannah Clough. It was Bernard Herman. Who is the voice behind Danger Mouse? <laughs> Phil? Terry Scott. Mark? Uh, David Jay. Is correct. Listen to this sound and tell me whose quote is this. You may not hear from me again. <laughs> That's uh, Lord Ho Ho. Is correct. Name the kook in Rawhide. <laughs> Phil? Billy Gibbons. Pass it on. It was Wishbone. Look at this picture. And what's special about the lady? I've started, so I'll stop. And it was actually Rita Hayworth, Orson Welles' wife. And with a final score of eight points to Phil, two to Mark, Phil is tonight's winner. <laughs> so Phil comes back on Tuesday to meet another challenger and wins a film book prize from this fabulous selection. Hard luck to you, Mark but you do, of course, take away your fax trophy. Now, if you think you can beat Phil, give us a call. I'll give you the details later. Right, now for a quick change of costume, and let's see how our audience are doing with Dem Bones. Dem Bones, Dem Bones, Dem... ...name is given in Britain to the second Sunday in November. John? Remembrance Sunday. Correct. From which group did Pergamon Press buy the Mirror Group newspapers? Peter? Maxwell's? No. Too late. It's Reed International. What word describes a receptacle such as a shrine in which religious relics are kept? Peter? Chalice. No. Tim? Sarcophagus. No. Reliquary. Which country is the world's largest producer of silver? John? Australia. No. Reg? Peru. No, it's Mexico. In 1985, Steve Cawthon won all but one of the English classics. Which one? Tim? The Oaks. No. Peter? 2,000 guineas. Correct. <laughs> Looked as if that was a shot in the dark there for Peter, but it got a two, an extra bonus point, which means that the final score line is that the Northampton neutrals have 31, the pack shots of London have 38. <laughs> well, that means, of course, that the Northampton neutrals, they did win one game, they scored 49, but they couldn't make it two in a row, so I'm afraid we won't be seeing them when we come back tomorrow. We will, however, be meeting the pack shots from London, plus uh, another trio who will come to play Master Team. Hope you'll come and play it with us too. Same time, same place tomorrow. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>
the six o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Good evening. The headlines at six o'clock. More than 40 people are feared dead in Britain's worst helicopter accident. A Chinook carrying oil rig workers plunged into the North Sea off the Shetlands. Two passengers survived. Hope is fading for the others. The Chancellor is increasing public spending. He says he'd like to cut taxes in the spring. Labour has dismissed it as nothing more than a cynical attempt to win votes. Also tonight, no success for the superpowers in Vienna, but there's still hope, they say. Mercy for the Marquis, a suspended jail sentence.